truth is important. And what I mean by this is, I like what a friend of mine said, that, that his goal is to believe as many true things as possible in life and disbelieve as many untrue things as possible. Truth is an important part of life. In many areas, there is a true thing. There, there is such a thing as a fact. Not everything in life is subjective. Uh, things can, at least from a, a casual perspective, of course, a, a, a person can argue the, the tiny fine points of things. But overall, there are things in life that are true and there are things that are not true. And, and too often those things are confused with each other or people don't really care one about the other or don't really care to know the details of what's happening in life. And sometimes truth is, is harsh. Sometimes truth is hurtful. It's, it's uncomfortable. Sometimes true things, especially when the crowd doesn't care about truth. Sometimes it's very difficult to take the time and, and the effort to learn about truth and then to hold on to that truth and share it with others uh, in the face of people mocking and saying, oh, all you do is think about stuff and you're some kind of philosopher. Why don't you just, you know, eat more potato chips and buy cigarettes and lottery tickets and watch soap operas or, you know, whatever it was, sport, sports ball, whatever. It, it's not easy being a searcher of truth. And, and I'm certainly not the only person, but but it, it seems that fewer than 5% of, of humans really, truly, curiously, with an open mind, search for truth. And so that is, that's a, a pretty strong value of mine. It's something I'm interested in doing and, and that I put a lot of effort into pursuing. I believe that all human interactions should be voluntary in nature. And what this means is that no one is coerced or force is not used against people. Violence is not initiated against people. Uh, threats, all, th this kind of thing. All interactions should be voluntary. And, and this goes from a casual meeting somebody in the grocery store and and saying hello and if the other person does not choose to stop and say hello and they choose to just keep walking that's fine that was a voluntary relationship every single time that human beings interact with each other it should be voluntary and mm -hmm. as i chat about some of my other values and and the things that i'm most passionate about It'll become clearer how this this is not as normal as I wish it was. There are a lot of people that have it as a general preference. However, really, truly, it it doesn't it doesn't turn out to be that they they really believe that all interactions should be voluntary. Um, and. Any time that the 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 initiation of violence happens, any time force is used against another person, you know, without without permission, that that, that people initiate this, it's it's just it goes downhill from there. It's wrong and it's bad, and there's there's no good excuse for it. Uh, it, it just it shouldn't happen. And so, I'm not going to keep keep on about this. It's kind of self explanatory. However, it's not as common as I wish it was. I believe that a person who has peacefully acquired property has all rights to it. And this kind of goes back to the, the voluntary interactions thing. Uh, if, if somebody has uh, rightfully obtained property, and, and by rightfully, I mean they haven't initiated violence, they haven't stolen it, they haven't... Uh, well, there are a lot of different types of theft. There's extortion, robbery, embezzlement, burglary, petty theft. Uh, there, there are lots of different ways to steal, to, to be a thief. 
and uh, yeah, it, it's just it's just plain wrong. And if somebody has stolen something and then they they claim rights to that thing, well, it doesn't belong to them. It still belongs to the person from whom they stole it. Um, so you know, the, the whole possession is nine tenths of the law, and well, maybe with government laws, but I'm talking about morality here. And if you have rightfully acquired a piece of property, it is yours. You know, if you have acquired a piece of property in an un, uh, un, uh, oh, I don't know, a, a, an improper way, an untort way, then then that doesn't count. But I, I'm saying that that if you've peacefully acquired your dollars or your car or your house or anything like that, you have all rights to it. And ownership rights are a little bit more complex than some people uh, choose to view them as. And, and what I mean by that is there are several elements. There's control, uh, and, that, and that is a big one. So if you have the right to property, you have the right to control that property. If someone else also has a right to control it, in other words, to say what can or cannot happen on that property, then they are also an owner of sorts. Uh, if you can't make 100% of decisions about 100% of aspects of your property, then you don't really own it. You, you might partially own it, but you don't completely own it. So if you're paying, if you have, have purchased a, a, a bicycle or a, a piece of real property or whatever, and anyone else claims any right to any portion of that, then you don't really own it. You should. And that's what I guess I'm talking about when I say that a person who has, has rightfully or peacefully acquired property has all rights to it, even though that's not the way things are in many civilizations, kind of uncivilized, but in many civilizations throughout history, that is not how things have been. I believe that human beings may exchange property and other things of value. So this is this is kind of the free trade idea. And I'm a a believer in free trade. Not most of the time or kind of or partially, but 100% of the time always. I believe that people may interact with each other in a in a way that shouldn't be hampered by anyone else. And and when I say hampered, I mean if Billy chooses to give Sue something, then I don't have a right to claim rights to a portion of that. Uh, you know, let's say Billy gave Sue a dozen eggs. I don't have the right to to say, well, I was here and and I was watching you, so therefore I get to have one of those eggs or five of those eggs. No, that's... Those two people get to have that interaction. And this this expands to a lot of things that various governments might not approve of. Various traditions might not approve of. And by this, I mean, let's just take, for example, a, uh, a prostitute. Well, there are a lot of governments throughout history, and, and you know, various things have led them to, to make these choices. But they have said no. Those two human beings may not exchange things of value. One person, uh, sexual intercourse; the other person, money. And so they, they, the governments have jumped in and said, "No, those two people may not exchange those things of value." Or um, certain uh, drugs, and I'm not talking about uh, caffeine or or something like that, but uh, things like cannabis, that that kind of thing. Um, the governments jump in and say, no, you, you, you can't exchange that between each other. And, and that's wrong. That's, uh, that's, that's not in line with my way of thinking. I think that's uh, getting in other people's business and there's, there's no reason, no right to do that. As long as nobody's initiating violence against someone else, you know, and, and, and it would be obvious, obvious to me, but I should probably say it. If, if there's a, a pimp that, that has gone out and, and found a, a young lady and, and, and he's 
coerced her into being hooked on drugs and he's threatening her and he beats her and he forces her to be a prostitute. And then she makes a deal with a, some John. Well, well, no, that's, that's not okay. But the, the problem with it isn't that there was a voluntary interaction. The problem was the violation of the NAP, the non-aggression principle. The pimp aggressed against the gal and forced her to have a uh, interaction with someone else to exchange something of value. And and, and that's a big part of this is, is, is that goes back to uh, the second thing I said, that human interactions should be voluntary. And that would not be a voluntary interaction. If one piece of person is being forced to transact with another, well, it's not voluntary anymore. So that falls outside of what I believe is, is good or proper or okay. I think that humans are born free, without debt to anyone, and not the property of anyone. This kind of goes into a, a popular thing over the last years where people have talked about giving back. And this idea of giving back is that, is that society over the last 6,000 years or millions of years, depending on one's worldview, society has provided people with opportunities. The the people who walked along the, the mountain trail and beat down a path uh, and have done so for centuries, and then you come along and it's a nice, easy path. Uh, there's this idea that human beings are born with a debt to uh, not an individual other human being, but the the concept of a bunch of human beings, the collective. And I, I don't agree with that. I, I believe that a person is born completely free. You don't owe any of your ancestors anything because, or your neighbor's ancestors, because they happen to walk along a trail and beat down a path. They, they all lived their lives. Millions of people over history have billions have lived their lives and they've done a lot of things. And some of those things might end up to have been negatives that made your life lousier and some of them were positives, and they made your life better. But you do not owe something to this this thing that doesn't even exist. Society, society is a, a, a not a, a real thing. It's an abstraction, and so you can't owe a debt to an abstraction. You can't owe a debt to society. You can owe a debt to a number of people, of individuals but not to this abstraction that's called society. And so you're born free, in my opinion, and everyone else is also born free. You're not the property of someone else. Even if they claim, well, you were born here in North Korea, and therefore we're going to assign you a, a number, an identification number, and you have to use that for the rest of your life. And and you have to come to the government and get permission to get married, or if you're going to build a a barn or whatever, you have to come to the the government. You know, this is what they do in North Korea. It's it's sad and disgusting, and it's a human rights violation by all means. But this this is actually happening even today uh, in North Korea. You cannot marry another person without first get go. You have to go to the the local government and get a slip of paper saying that it's okay for the two of you to get married. That is, and I'm recording this in 2022, and it's hard to believe that there this is still happening, that humanity has not moved beyond this, that there's still a place on our planet that is that repressive, that, that still thinks that centralized control is acceptable, uh, that, that, that it's, oh, well, it's okay, it's, you know, they're right to do that. Well, no, it's not. So, yeah, we're we're, we're born free, and, and we're not the property of others, and we, we, we get to be our own person. I judge many things and apply subjective values to those things. This is the whole idea that I've thought about for many, many years and trying to decide, well, what do I believe? Is morality subjective? Are things subjective or are they objective? And I mentioned earlier that there are some things that are 
true. And I guess this is kind of kind of going against that in a way, but I'll, I'll explain the nuances of it. And, and I think most of you who have stuck with me this long are going to understand nuanced thinking and, and will get this, and will get what I'm trying to say. And, and maybe I'm not saying everything well, perfectly. I guess I shouldn't say maybe. I'm definitely not saying everything perfectly. Where my words fail me, where I where I fail to properly make a point, please know that that the point could be right or wrong, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's wrong. Just because I'm not making it very well, it could still very well be a a, a true thing. So so this idea of of morality being objective or subjective, I think it's subjective. And, and how I figured this out is is I've thought of certain things. I've thought of an extreme example punching a little two-year-old girl in the face. And we would say that's that's objectively wrong. That's just plain wrong. And I don't care who you are or what the situation is. You shouldn't do that. That's just wrong. But then I have to ask myself, I say, well, yeah, I, I happen to agree with that. I happen to think that's despicable. That's horrible. But if I'm going to look at this and if I'm going to actually not just be a intellectually lazy, if I'm actually going to think through this, then I have to ask, well, what makes it wrong? Is there some magic fairy dust? Or what is it that makes it wrong? Well, I don't know. Do you know? Th this kind of gets complicated, doesn't it? Well, what makes it wrong to punch a little two-year-old girl in the face? And And I guess if I'm trying to think of things, my my first thing would probably be, well, it's not nice. And I think, well, what's niceness? And if you look up various definitions of nice, you see, well, we need to treat others kindly or in a, a pleasant, good way. Well, yeah, okay, I'll agree it's not nice, but but is nice necessarily wrong or right? And I'm just skimming the surface here, but I encourage you to get rid of, of your dogmatic beliefs, these things that we've always thought we knew, get rid of all those and start over. If they're good ideas, they're going to win out. You're going to find them again, and, and they're going to win out over all the others. So don't worry about tossing away an idea that you've really enjoyed holding to for a long time. Throw it away. It's it's If it's good, it's, it's going to win. You know, cream rises to the top, regardless of the size or shape of the container. And, and if it's good, it'll come back. So don't even worry about that. So I've had to come to the conclusion that morality, at least, is subjective. This is a toughie, but I've come to believe that. And beyond morals being subjective, I'd say the things we value are also subjective. The subjective value theory. And so this idea would be that I might really enjoy spending time face-to-face, -face, going on a walk, talking with a friend. And I can say that is a good thing. Well, no, to me, subjectively, it's good. But I must admit that I cannot make this definitive statement that for all people, for all times, good versus bad, it is good to go on a walk with a friend and talk. I think I'd be pretty safe saying 95% or more of people who do that have a good time. They enjoy it. They think of it as good. But is is good something that exists beyond the way that we think about it? And I'm, I'm not persuaded that it is. So this is why I say that I, I judge many things and, and I apply my subjective values to those things. I am only willing to have higher level conversations with capable people who adhere to logic and reason and who are intellectually consistent. And so I, I worded that sentence carefully because that's what I mean. I, I'm not opposed to having casual friendships and, and associating with people who are not intellectually consistent, who are illogical, who are dumb rather than capable. I might still, you know, run across these people and we'll have a good old time talking about casual things and and enjoying a sunset or or whatever's going on and 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 there's nothing, you know, bad about that. Um 
However, I'm not going to have a high-level conversation with that person. And after many years of really thinking, you know, this person has a, a master's degree in whatever, and they've got 30 years experience doing that thing, and wow, they're really, you know, they've, they've got this pedigree, they've got this experience, I, I'm going to have a conversation with them. And yeah, okay, they're not all that bright. You know, it doesn't, doesn't take that many brains to get a college degree. Um, so maybe they're not that bright and they might not really believe in logic. They don't stick to it. And, and maybe they're kind of intellectually inconsistent at times, but, but I'll talk to them. And I did that for years and I'm sick of it. Quite frankly, I'm done with it. No more of that. I'm done. Um, I'm not going to have those conversations with, with people anymore. It's life is too good. Life's too precious. It's too short. I'm done with that. Um, again, I'll have a ca casual conversation, but I have had too many hundreds of conversations that start out. And as soon as I see the other person is being illogical, I, I can tell where the, the conversation is going to go. And then I give them the benefit of the doubt. And yeah, the whole thing just goes in the toilet. So I don't do that anymore. So I might just choose if you're trying to argue with me and you don't really, oh, I don't know if you don't have a high IQ and you don't understand reason and logic, I might just, you know, say, hey, you know, you're probably right. Have a, have, you know, let's have a nice day and let's go just enjoy a Pepsi together. I, I might do that because it's just not worth the hassle of speaking to people who aren't really equipped to have these high level conversations. So maybe that's a little bit offensive. Uh, if you're hurt by it, I'm sorry. Um, and, and IQ is one of those things that who knows how much you can change it. You know, you can probably go up or down by 10 or 20 points. But if you are a real um, bottom eighth of humanity person, yeah, you're probably not going to be able to do a bunch of Mensa quiz puzzles online and, and be in the top eighth percent. You just you, you didn't get that that little stroke of luck of, of being intelligent and, and it's okay. Um, 80% of people are, are intelligent enough that they, they could, if they chose to learn logic and reason and basic thinking skills. However, most, most people don't choose to do so. And, and that's okay. And, and I don't have conversations with them. Words have meanings. And conversation partners ought to make sure the other person means the same thing that they do when they use a word. This happens very frequently in debates and conversations that I've had. And in trying to kind of move on from frustrating times that are not at all productive, I don't get anything out of them. My conversation partner doesn't get anything out of them. Uh, I've learned that it's very important in the very beginning of a conversation to make sure we know what the other person means when they say something. So if they say, okay, if they're using the word progressive and they say, you know what, Shepard, you're not being very progressive. Well, I need to take a little break there because progressive can mean a lot of different things. Different people think of things in different ways. And some people think of progressive as a very regressive, centralized, planning, tyrannical, totalitarian civilization. They think of that as progressivism. And then other people think of progress as humans getting better and better in, in some way, or things getting better and better in some way, and progressing. So, so I don't really care whose definition we end up using, it's just important to make sure that you agree. And, and if you have trouble with me, if you're using the word progressive and, and I'm not understanding it, maybe we'll choose a different word that has fewer, I don't know, it's not tied to as many emotional things. Maybe we'll choose a different word or set of words but it's very important that we're we're talking the same language, we're on the same page, because if we're not, and we both are thinking of different meanings for the same word, and we're tossing out that word, we're going to have arguments that just aren't very fruitful. They, they don't they don't really get anywhere. So that that's that's pretty important to me.
Uh, we're we're going to agree upon meanings of words before we start using them in an argument. I stick to my word, and I expect others to do the same. This is just an integrity thing. This isn't just being honest. Uh, not everybody makes this choice. Some people are not. Some people uh, speak loosely. Some people dream big out loud and make promises. And and uh, I've, I've made that mistake over the years. But this is something I really strive to do. And if, I, and if I ever fail, please call me on it. Just say, hey, hey, Shepard, you know, you... You claim to stick to your word, but you didn't in such and such a case. Um, you know, I'm going to make mistakes, but when I do, call me out. My goal is to to make myself better and better and better all the time. And so I would ask you to to call me on it if I mess up. I'm going to expect the same of you, my friend. If uh, if you're not sticking to your word, we're not going to associate with each other. I, there are too many people out there that are wonderful, wonderful human beings that I'm I'm not going to waste my time with people who don't stick to their word. It's just, yeah, my, my time's way too valuable. Time's a ticking. Not going to be here forever. I can't get any of the time back. Uh, I'm, I'm picking good, good people to associate with. I think all involuntary interactions, including government, are bad and unnecessary. This is where I'm losing some of you, isn't it? I'm guessing that some of you are thinking, well, wait a minute, government isn't involuntary because a few hundred people a few hundred years ago got together and they put on very fancy clothing, they met in a building, they they claimed that they were representing everybody, and they wrote some things down on pieces of paper, and that's how the government came about, and how can you be against something so magical or something that came about with that kind of a lovely fairy dust thing. How can you be against government? How can you say that it's involuntary? Well, just kind of from my sarcasm just then, you, you can tell it. it's, I assume if you're a, a thinking person, you've either read or you have it on your schedule to read Lysander Spooner's No Treason, Constitution of No Authority. And this is having to do with the United States government's uh, documents. They're uh, uh, the one they wrote, uh, Constitution, I guess, in the 1700s. And, and this is something that many of my friends, uh, I, I don't really understand why, but there's there's almost like a, a unthinking religious-like fervor with which people passionately love the Constitution. And I suspect that if you have an open mind and you, you listen to Lysander Spooner's uh, book on on YouTube or Odyssey or where a bunch of people have read the book and or if you buy it or if you download it for free, uh, I, I think after you digest that, think about it for for a few weeks, um, you'll not be able to really think of good arguments. That, that was the case with me. Um, I just no longer was able to say that government was a voluntary thing, and it's a, it's the people are represented and we have a say. Uh, and if we don't like how we're being represented, we can vote people who will do a better job. And this whole farce that that, that stuff works or is legitimate, I think that book is pretty good at explaining that away. So uh, I'm not saying you have to read a book to understand me, but um, I'm not going to have low-level conversations with you just going back and forth. Yeah, well, uh, no, yeah. Just if, if you're not going to put three hours into reading that, let's – Let's talk about other more casual things. Let's go fishing. Let's let's do something that doesn't involve deep thinking, philosophical thinking. Because if you're not willing to put a little bit into it, then uh, yeah, let, let's not do it. And and you know, I'm not saying that in a, a mean or belligerent way. I have friends who are really into some things that I don't understand: engineering, computer programming, that kind of stuff. And and I just choose not to put the energy into understanding it. So they know, well, they can't have a a intellectual conversation with Shepard about that stuff. I'm just not capable of it. And I find that 98% of people aren't capable and don't choose to make themselves capable to have intellectual conversations. Um, so if you're not willing to to do some basics, then maybe we'll just have to say we agree to disagree on number 10. And I, I would welcome an argument if you ever think of one. Uh, but that number 10 being, I think all involuntary interactions, including government, 
are bad and unnecessary. I won't, I won't continue going on about this because we've already talked about how, how I think everything should be voluntary. Well, this is the, this is the opposite of that. I believe that there are people who manipulate others, often on a grand scale, for their own benefit. And uh, well, I'll give you an example of one person. You call me a conspiracy theorist if you want, but but I'm one of them. I'm one of these people. I I have websites for my primary business, and and I pay for marketing, and I I try to think of sophisticated high level marketing uh, ideas and ways of using words and and oh is there a difference between marketing and advertising and if i'm marketing what words will i use to get the message across and and to what demographic am i trying to get this this point across and 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 so i think i'm probably not the only person who use who who manipulate language um psychology uh to benefit from it and I happen to be doing it in an honest and uh, positive way, not trying to hurt anybody or control anybody or rule anybody, anything like that. Uh, but there are people who I believe uh, do try to manipulate others. I think governments and, and well, if you've heard about the, the P problem, um, I think that the, the P's are out there really messing things up, really trying to manipulate people uh to try to have this elite whoever they are group uh be in in control of other human beings and yeah i i don't i don't like that and i i think it does exist i don't think it's ridiculous conspiracy to think that it exists and i believe that the corporate media is complicit in what we were just talking about I believe that the corporate media, I don't call them the mainstream media, because if you hear some of the craziness about a, you know, a, an eight-year-old child being able to make the choice to have parts of their body cut off because they think they might be somebody else, and there, there's some really sick and disgusting stuff that's happening that the, the media is saying, well, that's not mainstream. 99% of human beings realize how sick and twisted that is. And just because all the news stations are saying something doesn't mean that it's a mainstream uh, thing that they're saying or thinking. So, yeah, no, um, the, the corporate media is what I prefer to call them. And I, and I believe that they are part of the, you know, I call them the P for press um, when I talk about the problem of the P's. They are part of the problem. And I believe that uh, all, the big, all the big media folks are involved and uh help harm others in roundabout ways and and this does kind of sound a little bit abstract and 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 maybe I don't have the perfect proofs for it if you'd ever like to chat more about it or or hear more about it I'll toss out a few more of my ideas um and and my standard of proof hasn't necessarily been met uh for many of the things that I suspect uh I have a lower standard to suspect something than I do to believe something uh, and I, I'm very strongly suspicious uh, about many bad things that are happening in the world. I don't think they're all just a, a bunch of accidents. Kind of getting away from philosophy, getting more into life. My time is very valuable, and I ask that you respect it by scheduling time with me and honoring your commitments and being timely. Uh, I, my time isn't necessarily any more valuable than yours or anyone else's, but I happen to to think about these things and I really treasure my time. Maybe others don't treasure their time as much, but uh, especially when I'm in a busy season of life, please really be respectful. And uh, if you do want to interact with me, please, please make sure that we're on the same page and, and that we've scheduled time and and, you know, maybe we can schedule a whole weekend to just talk and, and hang out and, and think. Uh, that, that's great. But please don't want to get an investment from me and then not show up for the meeting. Uh, this is kind of what I'm talking about. Just let's be respectful of each other's time. I'll leave it at that. Some labels that are most frequently used to describe my thoughts uh, include... Stoicism, voluntarism, 
However, not everything that every Stoic or every voluntarist has ever said or what they believe exactly matches my thoughts. It doesn't exactly match what I think. I'm my own independent person. And sometimes for ease of language, I will use the word voluntarist or stoic, or that label will be assigned to me. But it doesn't own me or control how I think. It's just kind of a short way to to, to name some of the things I think. And uh, yeah, there isn't really a perfect philosophy out there. I think those two are, are getting fairly close, but there, there are imperfections even in those that I found. The uh, anti-subjectivism theory, it's pretty close, but I'm, I'm not sure I'm completely on board there. Um, so yeah, I, I think maybe it's better that we don't put labels of Republican, Democrat, voluntarist, libertarian, um, socialist, progressive. Maybe, maybe we shouldn't put all of these labels on things because I think they do cloud. You know, you who are listening to me right now, you have a set of things that that you believe, and if you would generally say that you're a Democrat, well, if you're not saying you agree to everything that every Democrat has ever said about anything. Well, no, you you have your own thoughts, and and that's just something you might say to to kind of shorten shorten the conversation a little bit and get the point across roughly. And and that's all I'm doing. Uh, if I if I use those terms. I believe that if I take care of the means, the end will take care of itself. This is something that Carl Watner talked about. I think he got it from Gandhi. And this is something that has been a, a tough switch for me. And, and it's really important, kind of like one of the kind of like understanding the difference of between collectivism and individualism. Until you understand those bigger ideas, um, it, it's hard to move on from there. And this is one of those also, I used to really think the ends justify the means. So if I really, 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 really want something, then I can do bad things if I think that's going to help make the good thing happen. And I've come to conclude that, no, that ain't right, man. Um, Life is too complex. Uh, And when I'm Saying complex, I mean it, you know, kind of from the engineering standpoint of the complexity issues. There are too many moving parts, too many things that rely upon others and and variables of different degrees. Um, it, it's impossible for me. I'm not smart enough, and, and neither are you. Neither is any politician, living or dead, or any guru, living or dead. Nobody is smart enough to run everything. No group of people are even smart enough to do that. Only we individuals can can do that. And so I guess when I say that uh, I believe that if I take care of the means, the end will take care of itself, I'm admitting that I don't know it all, and I will not try to to control you by doing bad things. I'm just going to, every day, every moment, I'll look at a situation, and I'll say, well, what's the right thing to do? What do I think is the, the best thing I can do here? What's the What's the right thing and the wrong thing based on my subjective values and morals and preferences? You know, what's the right thing to do? And then that's what I'm going to do. And uh, I'm, I'm not going to look in the long term and say, well, you know, in the in the long run, if I kill this person in front of me who's kind of ticking me off, I'll, I'll end up having lower blood pressure and and then I'll be nicer to people and, and kindness is wonderful and therefore I'm going to kill this person. I'm not going to do that twisted thinking stuff. No matter how good I might at times think that my strategizing is, I'll admit it. It's it might be better than everybody else's, but even if it is, it's not good enough to to try to control your life and tell you what to do. Hell no. I've already talked about morality being objective or subjective, and that I believe it's subjective. So we'll, we'll kind of leave that there. These are some of my ideas. These are the things I, I was I was thinking, you know, I, it'd be fair of me to tell people what it is that I believe, what's important to me, and to to kind of put pen to paper and, and, and write these down and put it out there to the world and say, this is who Shepard is. What do you think of that? So those are my thoughts. And uh, yeah, I'd, I'd 
like to update this this list that I have and and either make it longer or shorter or keep the same length, but clarify my ideas. My gosh, I think I gave 15, 16 ideas, and I can't imagine that I would be correct on all of those. Like, I can't imagine in two years I would look back. Well, actually, I did write these about two years ago, but I can't believe, I just can't imagine that in five years I would look back at these and say, yep, I still believe all of that. Like, I'm, I'm kind of hoping that those of you listening can say, you know, on number such and such, um, I, I disagree with that, and I'm willing to argue logically and reasonably, and, and let, let's have a, a fun debate over a, a quality beer and see if we can get this figured out. I, I, I'm very open to changing, uh, changing my list, changing what it is that I believe in, because why? Because I want to believe as many true things as possible. And if I've got something wrong and you have it right, by golly, tell me. I, I, I want to learn that. Thank you for taking some time out of your day to listen to my thoughts. I, I hope that it's helped you think about the things you agree and disagree with, and I, and I hope that you'll come up with your own list. You don't have to use mine as a, a guide. Just kind of think of the 5 or 10 or 15 or 20 things that are most important to you. What, what guides your life? What are the important things? And, and jot those down. And then really think about them and wordsmith them. And, and it was a wonderful exercise for me. It took me many, many, many months to, to do those once I decided to write it down. And, and they'll, they'll be constantly changing. So I encourage you to do that exercise yourself and uh, share your ideas with me. Thank you again so much for listening. Please do subscribe to my YouTube channel here on the, uh, if you're listening to on a podcast platform, if you'd subscribe here, if you give some feedback, give a thumbs up. I'd sure appreciate that. 